Hi, I'm Rebecca on with Money and Tech here at Coin Congress in San Francisco, and I'm here with Jose Caldera of Identity Mind Global. Thanks for joining me, Jose. Thank you very much for having us. So, Jose, tell me about Identity Mind Global. What kind of company are you? We're a risk management and payments company. Uh, we started out, uh, we're headquartered here in Silicon Valley. Uh, we started out in about 2009. We work with uh, some uh, payment companies that were OEM in our technology for anti fraud. And we started working uh, with the Bitcoin community and the cryptocurrency community in the summer of last year. Uh, and since then, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's, it's been good. We, we've been working with many, many companies. We have about 20, 25 different cu cu companies, customers in the, in the Bitcoin space and the alternative coin space. About what percentage of your overall customer base is that? Um, still small uh, compared to the rest of our business, uh, not only in, in number of customers, but also in sort of the, the amount of revenue that, that brings in. But, you know, it's, it's, it's an industry that is growing, that, is, uh, that there's a lot of interest. Um, we, we're experiencing, you know, the usual growing pains of any nascent industry. Uh, but it's, it's, it's going in the right direction, and it's, it's all, it's all, we're seeing a lot of progress in this industry. What inspired you to get into the Bitcoin industry with your company? Um, we had some uh, interesting relationships with uh, banks that were... Uh, they recognized that our technology was appropriate to mitigate the risk uh, f with, you know, with dealing with companies that were dealing with Bitcoin. Um, they were our previous partners, and, uh, and and they saw that the technology could adapt very well to the needs of the of the Bitcoin industry and the Bitcoin companies, uh, especially in the in the anti-money laundering uh, space uh, for uh, with the application of know your customer and transaction monitoring. Um, so I think that that kind of was the, the the initial step that we took towards the industry, and after that, it's you know it's a it's a, it's a fascinating world of, of cryptocurrency, and um, and you know it's 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 evolving, and we we are evolving with it, which is always a good thing. Do you find that Bitcoin companies are uh, open to adopting you know anti money laundering and, and know your customer compliance regulations, or has that been a difficult conversation to have? Our view is a little bit skewed because we get approached by companies that are, are actually want to have that discussion. Um, so the majority of the customer, the the companies that we talk to, had a very you know have a very uh, open mind when it comes to regulations. Um, there still needs to be cl more clear regulations uh, from from the from both the state and government. Uh, and they, they still need a lot of education. I think that that is the, the main thing. But, but in general, um, you know, and, and again, I, I do have a, a little bit of a skewed view of the of the industry because of, of what we do. Um, the there is a, a, a great receptivity and a great collaboration in trying to do the right thing. Most people actually want to do the right thing, um, contrary to to what sometimes you read on the press that. Uh, it, it really people want to do the right thing and, and you know and they want to comply and you know if you don't comply with the rules and regulations then you end up in jail so you really want to do that right well that has been happening more and more yes unfortunately um, although a lot of the uh, the trials that are going on currently are still pending so it's also unclear what the ramifications actually would be for any of these things but um, so on that regulation conversation do you have thoughts on the New York uh, Department of Financial Services bit license regulation proposal and possible implications that may have on the whole regulation space you know it's, it's a tough question right it's, it's a it's a the regulation the proposed regulation really came out just last week um, the still you we, we have to form very informed opinions about the potential consequences of it. Um, it is certainly comprehensive uh, and perhaps a little bit over, overbearing uh, for the for a nation community. There are some positive aspects of it. Uh, I think that uh, you know that, that for the first time we're seeing true understanding of some of the different business models that that might be part of the ecosystem. Not not all of it, obviously, but but at least there are some clear indication that somebody took at least uh, try to understand the different actors in the community. It also seems to be uh, trying to overcome some of the 
you know, the cybersecurity risks that were the downfall of the, you know, the prominent things like Mt. Gox and such, it, it wasn't really because of Bitcoin or because Bitcoin was anonymous. It was, the, the reason of this was probably poor business practices and people that didn't quite understand that they were dealing with people's money. And, and you know, when you lose people's money, people get angry, obviously. Um, so I think as the, the industry matures, and, and I think that, um, that there would become better products and better, uh, uh, better protection. So regulation needs to come along. Um, whether the New York regulation is perhaps too much at the stage of where the industry is, you know, the, there is potentially some of that. I think that uh, if there is a space where the community can sort of give their opinion and feedback, to regulators and, and regulators then take those opinions and um, to heart and I think I think you know eventually we're going to yield regulations that make sense and are adequate for for the community um, but regulations are also you know the law so you have to abide by them regardless of whether you believe in them or not right so it'll be interesting to see how these New York regulations pan out as setting an example for what will follow in other states and countries. You guys are quite global. Um, you actually just announced that you expanded into the European Union as well. Yeah, um, so we, we recently uh, were, were awarded a certification of a safe harbor. Um, we've been working with customers outside, both domestically and internationally. Um, so we're seeing that a lot of the applications of our technology uh, really apply to uh, regulations around the world. Um, safe harbor was important because the regulations of privacy in the in European Union are are a bit more strict than what we have here in the United States. Um, so that allows the technology that we've created and we've developed um, to be effective in in those countries uh, and, and abide by 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 the privacy regulations. Um, and then that allows us then to offer some of our programs that we're offering here in the United States, uh, allow them to offer them internationally as well. Um, so, it, it, so, so we have a program that we call Ignite, um, that is a, a program really tailored to uh, startup companies, Bitcoin startup com com companies, allows them to get access to you know, top of the line technology for both KYC and transaction monitoring. Um, and that technology now is uh, is available to that that program is now available to everyone in the world, and it is our also our you know stands with the community and say you know we want to do the right thing we want to help grow the industry, so it's really a program tailored for for startups that that you know it's hard at the beginning to establish banking relationships. It's hard at the beginning to understand, you know, what is going to be your volume or what is going, and, and you know, other, when we started out in this industry, you know, our approach was, was the same that we were taking in more mature industries. Um, and we realized very quickly that if we wanted to help the community grow and adopt technology that associated with, with again, this, this KYC and transaction monitoring, um, we needed to to offer something a little bit different, and and that's how Ignite uh, we started Ignite, and now with this, then we can expand it worldwide. So, is Ignite specifically for Bitcoin startups, or do you have startups of other industries in there as well? Uh, the Ignite is for Bitcoin and alternative coins. is really towards cryptocurrencies. Um, it's not. Uh, we have other industries. We have other programs for other industries, but but Ignite is specifically for. Uh, cryptocurrency. We've done a lot of work um, to model uh, inside our technology uh, the things that you know that as a you know as a as a money exchanger, as a as a uh, as a trader, as a money transmitter in cryptocurrencies, you really should care about. And um, and I think that is what is makes it special for uh, at least this program. What makes it special for uh, cryptocurrency in general. So that's awesome that you're now offering that to um, your European customers as well, uh, thanks to your Safe Harbor certification. I understand that's something you have to reapply for every 12 months. Is that going to add problems to your ability to plan long-term you know, business goals? Well, uh, hopefully not. I mean, I think that we've been the... Our core technology, I mean, unless the privacy laws change, obviously, which 
you know, we, we don't have a crystal ball for that one, but, um, but, but our technology is, the way that we've applied our technology to this type of data, we have figured out ways of how you can assess identities and how you can assess um, the likelihood of, of having stolen information without necessarily violating certain privacy laws. And, you know, who knows what happens next, but, but, but you know, as we move forward and we are very um, cautious um, because we're very well and knowledgeable about this loss, um, you know, we, we will make sure that we don't, we're not in violation of those laws. And, and as this evolves, then we'll have to evolve with them. Absolutely. Well, so how is your Coin Congress going so far? Um, so far, it's pretty good. Um, uh, we, I, I had the opportunity to participate in a panel earlier on today about regulations, and um, uh, I had the opportunity to share the panel with great, great people that had a lot of insights. Uh, most of them lawyers. I, I think I was the only that was not a lawyer in the panel. Um, uh, so, you know, some of the things are a bit outside my expertise. Uh, we're really providers of technology more than anything. Um, but it, it was great. It was good to hear some of the opinions of others uh, that are actually practitioners of law that in how they interpret the different regulations. Obviously, the, the New York, uh, the Department of Financial Services proposal was part of the topic. Um, and you can hear some, you know, some, some of the, the, the things that we mentioned before as being, as being shared among the panelists. Um, and now that, you know, we've seen some interesting directions on the, on the, on the community. Uh, I met good friends in here that I've, that I've known. Most of our customers, well, not most, but some of our customers are here as well. So it's always a good time to reconnect with them and see what, how they're doing and, and how, you know, how things are shaping up for them. Absolutely. Well, it's great to see you here. That was Jose Caldera of Identity Mind Global, and I'm Rebecca Ahn. Thanks for joining us. This has been Money in Tech.